Hey everybody, this is Meyer, and in this video, what we're gonna be doing is using Icarus to create a big trance saw pad. This is gonna be the sound that we are making. And in context, And you can really hear it when I take it out. Alrighty, so the first thing we're gonna need to do besides duplicating the patch is actually creating the MIDI that we want for our pad. So I'm gonna just call this pad and just give this, uh, I don't know, like a maybe a kind of purplish color like this. This is gonna be our pad sound now i'm doing this on the same channel as the lead so i can see what it is i want to do so first thing we need to do of course is follow the bass notes of our melody we already have this in of course from the sub pad so let me go ahead and grab this but i want to do this the reason i want to do this on the lead channel so clicking here and clicking on this command v i even select it from another channel and hit command c to copy it is i want to be able to build it up by seeing what it is we have here so And let me go ahead and route this while we're here. Command L on Mac, Control <laughs> L on Windows to map it to the mixer. And we wanna just get these notes set up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go up an octave as well. So we're gonna bring this up to the G. And then basically what I think I may do is follow the top notes. Sometimes what people will do is do a fifth, but this melody is actually doing the fifths quite a bit. So I may just kind of have it do something like this. So playing those those root notes and then just basically playing the top note. This is kind of... And we may see what sounds good. So let me play this with... I'm gonna play this with the lead only. And this one should come down actually. and you kind of have this suspended chord at the end. This sounds good. What I may do later is decide to make these into power chords, which would mean I would take these bottom notes and move them up to a fifth. That may be too much, so I don't want to do that right now. This is what this would sound like. Just go ahead and play it, I guess. I like the way that sounds, but I'm not decided if I want that, and it's a lot easier to put it in later than to take it out. So let's go ahead and mute the lead for now, and I'm gonna just look at the pad. We're gonna go ahead and start creating the sound. So the first thing we're gonna do, turn the sustain all the way up, add a little bit of attack and a little bit of release. So we want this in polyphonic mode, so that way we can play multiple notes at the same time. This is what we have so far. Kind of an ugly sound, but that's because we're not really doing anything. So I'm actually gonna go under Mega Saw and I'm gonna choose Mega Stereo 12 for this first oscillator. And I'm gonna bump this up an octave and just adjust the spread until this actually sounds like it fits, like a big saw pad. So 
sounding pretty good. I'm gonna copy this to oscillator two. And what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna just do the same thing, but an octave higher. And rather than using Mega Stereo 12, I'm gonna use Mega Stereo six. So let's go ahead and mix this in. You don't want too much of that because it's just a lot, but that's sounding pretty good. And for this last oscillator, we have a couple options. One would be to do something like this, where I copy this to oscillator three and bump this down to this first octave. Oops. The other would be to do something like noise, adding some white noise. What I'm gonna do is use this as before in Mega Stereo 6 mode, like this, just an octave lower. So we actually have three octaves playing. This is pretty lush, pretty big. And we can add noise with the filter, which is what I'm gonna do. So for this filter, I wanna choose a 12 dB per octave filter. And the reason for this is that I'm probably going, I want it to be a little bit more gentle. So what I'm gonna use is this Curtis 12 dB. The digital one is really good too, but I like this Curtis sounding. It's a very smooth filter. Maybe a little more release. That's sounding good. For this distortion, I'm gonna actually add noise mix white. And now with this drive knob, this is a new feature in Icarus 3, is going to actually add white noise to the sound. So this will allow me to get that noise while still using these three oscillators for the different octaves. And what I'm realizing now is that I need to do this on a different filter just because this is going to add it post filter, which is not what I want it to do. So probably what I'll do is maybe set this to EQ, peak wide, and then basically what I'm gonna do is just set the resonance right in the middle so that this filter is really just not doing anything. So if I, this just needs to be at 50, that's gonna add it and then we'll just use this as our Curtis 12 dB per octave filter with a little bit of resonance. So let's go ahead and map this to the modulation wheel. I'm gonna basically set this to cut off and this is the lowest point I need it, like that. And as I open it up, That is sounding pretty great. Moving on here to the effects. For effects one, um, I am probably, I might use a phaser, although I'm probably not going to use it too much. I just like kind of having it to give the sound a little bit of movement. It's very subtle, but it's there. And then what I think I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of this plate reverb. I often don't use reverb on my pads, but sometimes it's nice to do. It just kind of depends. I, I Like I said, I really like the plate reverb here and it might help with smoothing over when those two notes play at the same time. It's very easy for this reverb to get muddy and everything kind of gets washed in it. So we just need to be really careful. Um, let me go ahead and check this dynamic bass. If 
maybe turn the noise down and then this to 3 dB. I think that's honestly pretty good for what we have right now. Um, there are a few other things we could add here. Um, I'm not going to do that, but what I will do is go to the matrix and I'm going to choose LFO one to modulate the pitch. So I'm going to choose LFO one plus minus. And the reason I'm doing this from the matrix is I can actually control all the oscillators pitch from it this way. And I'm going to choose oscillator one through three fine. So what this is going to do is adjust the fine pitch, the fine tuning pitch of each of these oscillators. So I'm going to change this from BPM to just free running. The reason I'm doing this in plus minus mode is I want it to go in both directions. So I want the pitch to still on average be centered around the correct pitch. I don't want it kind of offset. And that's what this will force it to do. I will add just a hair of fade in. Notice that this, the actual like time, it's it's very exponential the way it, it gets added. So um, you kind of have to push it up quite a bit for it to fade in even at 0.1 seconds. You can see it. Might be a little too much resonance. Now, one thing that I like doing for an, an LFO like this is having it run free running. It's not gonna be triggered by the BPM. So the way we do this is we go to setup and basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose the trigger mode. We're gonna choose ARP slash LFO free. So that means it'll be running no matter when you press the key. So it'll just keep running whatever the, the pitch currently is. So let's go ahead and mix this in here at the breakdown. We're of course going to want to add some of the filter modulation. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to copy or cut my pad channel from this lead section by hitting command X, create a new pattern called pad. And of course, give it the same color as we did before and paste it on here. So that way we can have our pad here on a new channel and I'm just going to paint it over with the rest of the sound. So this is going to be, you know, really, really big. And the thing that we need to then do is we need to now add in our filter modulation. So what I'm going to do here is wiggle this or wiggle the macro tools last tweaked, and we're going to create an automation clip. And just like the lead, I'm going to bring this down here. We want to follow what the lead is doing. So I'm just going to kind of follow it like this. So let's hear it with the lead. This is too loud. And as we have with the lead, we want to go ahead and add this sidechain compression as we did before. So just drag that over, take our kick, right click sidechain to this track, and let's make sure that that fruity limiter is borrowing from the kick, which it is.
It's sounding pretty good. What I may do is try adding in those fifths. Let's see if that sounds good. So I'm gonna hold down shift, click and drag this up and put this at the fifth position, which is D. Yeah, I like the way that sounds. Let me hear this pad and the lead together at this main section. I may actually add a little bit of attack and release. It's just, I'm hearing these in context. I wanna make sure they work well together. And what I might do here is switch this filter to a high pass digital 12 like this. So that way we could technically automate this if we wanted to. So what I'm gonna do is tweak it, tools, last tweaked, create an automation clip. And what I'm doing with this is like the lead, there are those times in which we would want to have this pad, perhaps, high passed as well. So I'm gonna right click and insert a clip here and click and drag this in. And unfortunately it didn't get it all the way. So I'm just gonna put it here and <laughs> extend it this way. So that way what we can do here is very similar to this when we, when we are bringing this lead in and out like this, we can kind of high pass it. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here right before we um, right before the, the leads come in full all the way. Yeah, there we go. That's what I'm trying to do is basically have it so that it has that pumping effect when the lead is playing. And the last thing I may do is just solo this pad and just find a mid frequency. Yeah, that's sounding pretty good. Sounding good. 